Hello. So the 2023 Allure Best of Beauty winners have been announced. Now, last year we saw more recognizable brands and products than in years prior. We have more things to get excited about. And I did notice that again with this year's list. But as I was combing through the nearly 400 winners, only around 25 stood out to me the most and got me excited enough to where I thought they were worthy enough to be on this year's list. Not that my opinion matters. I just thought I would pull them out and share them with you and why I love them. I mean, only 25 out of nearly 400 is what, around 6%, which is not many in the whole scheme of things. When I do these Allure Best of Beauty winner videos, I put myself in the frame of mind of a regular beauty consumer. If beauty wasn't my job, would I have the time, energy, or the patience to go through all the categories and all the winners to see which products were deemed the best of the best? Probably not. So I've been doing this video for the past few years. You seem to enjoy it and I have a lot of fun doing it. We keep it casual and laid back. I give you my quick thoughts, my speed reviews as to why I like these particular products more than others on the list, basically. I know a few people cover the Allure Best of Beauty winners in various ways, and I always have a lot of fun watching those videos too. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, and let's get into these 25 Allure Best of Beauty winners that stood out to me the most in 2023. Let's talk about foundations. Now, you know how extremely picky I am when it comes to face complexion products like foundations, concealers, powders, primers. If you're a subscriber of mine, I test and review those types of products regularly and I'm just pretty hard on them in general. So it will probably come as no surprise to you that I pretty much disagreed with every product in those categories for one reason or another, or I just thought there could have been better winners. With the exception of two foundations that I wholeheartedly agree with, I love both of these. They're great for all skin types and they live in my vanity. They're actually two of my favorite foundations at this point. This is Guerlain Terracotta Latent Healthy Glow Foundation. This is a winner in the splurge makeup category. And we have House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation foundation, which is a winner in the clean makeup category. So both of these are lightweight, smoothing and blurring, and they last well throughout the day. And they both look incredible incredibly natural, even while having medium to medium full coverage. Now, Guerlain has a luminous matte finish, which sounds contradictory, but it's actually the perfect way to describe it. It's not a dewy finish. It, it settles into your skin and looks truly skin-like with this thin veil of coverage. It isn't too matte. It's not too dewy. You don't have any tackiness, but it's got these luminous particles. I hate using that word because there's no glitter, there's no glimmer. It's just got this luminous kind of candlelit glow property to it that makes it an ideal foundation for those of you who get any kind of shine throughout the day. If you have combination skin or oily skin and you want a dewy, glowy, healthy look, but most dewy foundations make you too greasy or wet looking, this is perfect for you. And of course, this finish is stunning on normal to dry skin too. This is one of my go-to skin-like foundations at this point. And House Labs has some really unique and beneficial skincare ingredients in it that are especially great for those of us with mature skin. It kind of fuses with your skin as you blend it out and gives a natural radiance that somehow is not too radiant for my combination skin. And it looks natural and beautiful. It's not quite is skin-like as Guerlain, but it's still really, really beautiful. It's great for special occasions or every day. I was actually surprised at how much I liked both of these because usually foundations with these finishes can break down on me as the day goes on or make me too shiny in my T-zone, but these are both just stunningly beautiful on all skin types, including mature skin. If you wanna see what these look like on me, how they apply and wear throughout the day, and just my more in-depth thoughts on either of these foundations, I do have full reviews on each of these that you can check out after this video video. I'll have them linked up in a card in my description box and in my top pinned comment, along with all the products I'm sharing with you today. 
I was really excited to see one of my favorite setting sprays in general win for best matte setting spray. This is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Matte Setting Spray. I love this because it's alcohol free and it's hard to find an effective mattifying setting spray that doesn't contain alcohol. There are a few really good ones out there, but I really love this one because it softly mattifies. It doesn't take my makeup into this weird, overly mattified, powdery looking place. It just keeps me shine free longer, which is all I want. It's also got a really nice, fine cloud-like mist that I just got all over my lap. I do believe I'm almost out. I need to to add this to my Sephora loves list for the upcoming sale. But this is a setting spray that if you're wanting to just prevent shine a little bit longer and keep your makeup intact, it's fantastic. Another product that I reach for frequently that lives in my vanity because it's so easy and quick to use is NARS Laguna Bronzing Cream. This one for best cream bronzer. Now this is the original tone. There are other tones you can choose from, but the original works really nicely for my light medium skin tone. It's not too red or too yellow, but it's just no fail. It's very easy to work with, to blend out. Now that's kind of messy. I didn't blend out the edges or anything, but it just gives a nice, sheer bronzy tone that always looks natural. It gives you time to blend it out before it sets and it does set down. It doesn't stay sticky or tacky or dewy, which is something I look for in a bronzer because I just don't like to feel it. It has kind of a, a tropical scent to it that I, I notice it when I open the jar, but I don't notice it after it's on my skin. But it's a very beginner friendly, user friendly, getting ready quickly friendly pick. Let's talk about blush. I have three different categories to cover here because I just agreed so much with the winners in these categories and I have them all swatched on the back of my hand and I just figured I would just lump them all together since they're all blushes. So the first category is best cream blush compact and this is one of my favorite longest lasting blush formulas ever. It's really unique. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed. I think that's the full name. It's got a really, really long name. This is not a balm that is going to leave a greasy or heavy film or texture. These blur your pores, your texture, like no blush I've ever seen blur before, but they're almost a cream to powder formula and they're very, very pigmented. You can apply them over your skin, over foundation or over powder and they apply beautifully because they're not super liquidy. I like to either dip a sponge or a brush in the product and then diffuse it out on the back of my hand so that they apply very evenly and I don't get too much pigment right away. This is the shade that I have on today. This is called Jubilee. And when I want a long lasting blush that will last all day long through heat and humidity, if I'm gonna sweat, they'll last through that. This is one of the blushes that I will reach for. These are long lasting, smoothing, diffusing, and they truly melt into your skin and leave no residue at all. It's like they become one with your skin. So that shade Jubilee was right there. And this is Bellini and this is Prima Donna. And oh man, one of my favorite, favorite blushes. I was a little surprised to see that the winner of the best cream blush in a tube was Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk matte beauty blush wand and not the original formula with the sheen to it because those have been so popular but this is my favorite formula i like this a lot better because it really does just meld with your skin very much in the same way that danessa myricks does once it sets down it just looks like your skin texture instead of like you have something extra on your your skin so this is the shade pink pop right here it looks like it's not really showing up because these are so vibrant, but on my light medium skin, it does give a nice flush of color. And of course you do have the applicator. Some people love it, some people don't, but I did like this winner and I was happy that it won over the original version. I was also surprised to see that the best powder blush winner was Armani Luminous Silk Glow Blush. Not because I don't like it, I do love it. I think it's a great blush, but I thought this would win in the splurge category since it is kind of a splurge. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous formula that really just gives you kind of a lit from within glow, but without 
sheen to it. It's just got kind of a natural radiance to it. The shade that I have swatched here just has 40 on the back. So I'll have to see what shade that is, if it is actually a shade, but here it is swatched here. And like the other two formulas, this is a formula that's buildable, flattering on all skin types and lasts well throughout the day. I don't contour very much anymore. Every now and then I will, but it takes more time than I'm usually willing to spend. But I do have specific products that I use, powder or cream products, and this is one of them. This is one that I reach for when I do contour on those rare occasions. This is the Milk Makeup Sculpt Cream Contour Stick. The shade I have is Stoked, I do believe, and it won for Best Contour Stick. And I love the shade. It's got just enough of a gray undertone to create that shadow. It glides on quickly and easily, gives you time to blend it out before it sets down and it wears nicely throughout the day without leaving some kind of a, a film on your face. It does set down. As you can see, there's kind of a theme going on here with that. This has been a staple for me since it launched. It's just so easy to use. It's beginner friendly. So I was happy to see that it won this category. I'm a big fan and a big user of liquid cream and stick eyeshadows, whether it's to get a quick one and done look by swiping it on, blending out the edges and calling it a day, or using them for an entire eye look like I did today with the winner of the shimmer eyeshadow stick category, Bobbi Brown. Bobbi Brown won this category with the long wear cream shadow sticks. Now I did use matte and shimmers today. I've had these, so hopefully they're still in existence. I used golden bronze on the outer portion of my lid. It's the deep shade and I use golden pink on the inner portion of my lid. These are little minis. I think this was a set and what I used a really small amount of along my lower lash line and then in my crease and transition area is the shade Cashew, which is a matte shade. To line, I used a deep chocolate brown called Bark. I do love these. They apply and blend out really easily. There are others that I think could have won in this category. You guys know I'm a big fan of Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks, It Cosmetics, and there are some others too, but I mean, they have to pick a winner and this is a good one. Since its launch, this has become one of my most used lip balms. It truly hydrates my lips from deep within. I use this at night a lot. I'll just throw it on during the day. If I'm at home, it lives in my top bathroom drawer so that I can just reach for it and slap it on. This is the Plum Plump Hyaluronic Gloss Balm from Glow Recipe, and it's the winner of the Best Untinted Lip Balm. It's got vitamin C to help smooth the look of fine lines and wrinkles. It's got hyaluronic acid to help hydrate and plump, and it's got raspberry extract to help hydrate even further and to protect against moisture loss. It's got a very, very, very subtle raspberry scent and taste. It's just slightly sweet and it's not sticky at all. It's just super nourishing. It gives a lot of shine if you do want to wear it during the day or anything. I mean, there's quite a dent in there. This is a product that will be repurchased by me when it runs out. I love this stuff so much. I have a few lip balms that really, really work for me to keep my lips plump and nourished and hydrated and never chapped. And this is one of them. I was also really happy to see the winner of the best tinted lip balm. It's another one that I swear by, but it gives a little bit of color. This is the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. It comes in various shades, tints, flavors. The one that I have on today over another lip product, the one I'm holding here is Vanilla Beige, which I can swatch for you because there's actually a tint to it as opposed to the clear lip balm before. So this is vanilla beige and I'll go ahead and top my lips off with it too because you can wear it over your bare lips, over lip liner, over lipstick like I am today and the soft angled applicator makes it really easy and quick to apply. It's very silky, hydrating and nourishing. It's not sticky at all and is one of my favorite tinted lip balms. It's just easy to throw in a purse or a beach bag or whatever you want to throw it in. It's just easy and flattering and great for dry lips. Flower Beauty Plump Up Gloss Stick is one of the winners in the Makeup Steals category, and I love this formula. The shade that I have is Spicy. It's $12, and it's along the lines of Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, but it's not quite as delicate of a formula. You don't have to be so careful when you apply it to your lips, because with the Tarte, if you're not careful, you can kind of smush it, but it's that same 
lip balm, lip tint, lip gloss kind of hybrid product that just glides on so smoothly and gives you a really nice tint. I'm gonna kind of layer it so you can see. I keep saying I wanna get more shades and I probably should because this is a really, really nice formula. I don't even notice a scent with these at all. So those of you that are kind of scent averse, you would probably like these too. The best mineral facial sunscreen winner was La Roche-Posay Anthelios Tinted Sunscreen SPF 50. I don't currently have this in my possession, but it is a really great, very, very popular sunscreen for those of you who love mineral sunscreens like I do. It's oil-free, it's nice for sensitive skin, and it's very lightweight. I have a lot of sunscreens in my life right now, so I just don't have this one at the moment, but it's a best-selling sunscreen for a reason. In, so it's not surprising to me that it is a winner this year. And the best chemical facial sunscreen winner is Innisfree Daily UV Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 36. This is a fantastic formula that I've shared several times on my channel and is one of the very few chemical sunscreens that works really well for my sensitive skin with rosacea. Now the reason why I don't have it here is because I sacrificed it. My 18 year old daughter Brooke has it at college. She was asking me if I had a sunscreen on hand she could take with her that would sink in like a lotion, wouldn't give a white cast, wouldn't feel like anything after she applied it, and would wear well under makeup if she was wearing makeup that day. And so I gave it to her. It is a really, really nice formula for all skin types. I feel like there might be a mix up with this next category. Now I use and love this product regularly for a specific reason, but it is not a weekly peel and it is the winner of the best weekly peel. This is the Drunk Elephant Bouncy Bright Facial. This is a leave-on mask that you apply at the end of your skincare routine with azelaic acid that's supposed to brighten and smooth your skin and calm redness or rosacea if you have rosacea, salicylic acid to unclog pores and exfoliate improve texture and tone. And it also has a triple antioxidant brightening complex that's supposed to help reduce hyperpigmentation by supporting areas of excess melanin production. Now you can add this to your morning or evening routine, however it's more convenient to you, but Drunk Elephant says you can even use this daily if you want to. It's definitely not a weekly peel type of product. It's not designed to be that way. I don't use it daily. I, I tend to use it when I feel like I need it, when my rosacea is flared up or if I have a break out from testing products or you know whatever reason but it really does help calm my skin even everything out brighten when I first tried this I said that I regretted letting it sit untried for so long because I didn't really think it was going to do anything and after trying it I just I really love what it does for my skin and it's just so easy to throw it on over my existing skincare that I'm already doing it's a no-brainer so I'm glad to see it in the list of winners but this category is kind of bizarre. Good Jeans from Sunday Riley is the winner for best resurfacing serum and I think it is well deserved. I know it's been out for a while and there are newer, shinier, brighter products out there so it gets overshadowed but if you have sensitive skin and other acids, other exfoliating treatments, glycolic acids are too harsh for you because it's a lactic acid treatment it works while being more gentle on your skin. I have very sensitive skin and my skin does really, really well with it. And it's really effective for exfoliating and helping with skin cell turnover, which slows as we age. So exfoliating becomes more and more important. It helps clarify your skin and smooth fine lines and wrinkles. And it can help with dark spots and even help soothe red or sensitive, irritated skin. It used to be a staple product for me that I would rotate. And because so many new products have come out, I also have been guilty of kind of pushing it to the side. It's a product I need to pull back out again because it is really effective. The best deep puffing eye balm winner is one that I absolutely love. Well, I love a version of it. So the Tula Glow and Get It in the Aqua Tube is the one that they're showing in Allure. This is the Rose Glow and Get It. This is the version I use, but they do essentially the same thing. So this is a hydrating, deep puffing, brightening eye balm that feels kind of cooling when you swipe it on. And you can see that sheen, it, it kind of leaves, but it's not like, 
like a glittery or a glimmery sheen. It just leaves kind of a radiance under your eyes that smooths while it does all the other things. I love this product. It lives at my vanity. It's a great prep step before I go in with my makeup, with my corrector and concealer. People that love these really, really love them. They're kind of cult classics and it's a great product. I just filmed another video raving about this product. I think that video is going up Sunday. I was saying how when my under eye area is sensitive or irritated, this is the eye cream that I reach for because it's always soothing and hydrating and it is the winner for the best treatment for sensitive eyes. This is the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Triple Lipid Plus Collagen Eye Treatment. This helps with the moisture barrier underneath your eyes. It helps soothe and depuff and hydrate. There are pet Tides, caffeine, and niacinamide, and some other really nice ingredients in here. The texture is nice and light and creamy. It's great for nighttime. It also wears really well under makeup. It's kind of a great do-it-all eye cream that I was happy and surprised to see. The Ordinary Glucoside Foaming Cleanser is one of the winners in the skincare steals category. I know I shared this in one of my monthly favorites and fails videos. I just found it to be a nice foaming gel cleanser that cleansed effectively yet never left my skin feeling stripped. And that's the purpose of glucoside is to effectively remove impurities and dirt and all the grime while leaving your moisture barrier intact. You get a lot for your money. I want to say it's like 12, 12.50 and the bottle is a really nice size. I've had some good luck with some ordinary products as of late. I say as of late as of the past year or so and this was one of them. I'm a big fan of LED red light therapy. There are so many benefits to it. You can read up on it and find out everything it can do from pain relief, relieving chronic inflammation anywhere on the body, wound healing, calming your skin, increasing collagen production from deep within, which is what we typically think of it for when we're talking about skincare. So they gave the award for the best LED mask to the Dr. Dennis Gross Spectralite Face Wear Pro. Now out of all of the masks out there, do I think this should be the winner? I I'm not necessarily sure about that. I do think my current body is stronger. You do need to wear it for 10 minutes. You can walk around with it, but there's a cord hanging off. So the fact that this one is three minutes and is fully cordless and gives you the option of using red light, blue light, or a combination of both is pretty good. There are days when I don't want to wear my LED mask for 10 minutes, but I still want to get some of the benefits. So this is great to have. I will also say that as someone who avoided trying this one for a long time, I've been pleasantly surprised by how much I, I do like it. I'm sharing these next two as one. I'm kind of cheating a little bit because they were both winners last year and maybe even before that. And they're both just teeny tiny little tool products that I can talk about pretty quickly. So we have the winner for best tweezers as the Tweezerman Slant Tweezers. I have had these in my life for well over 20 years. They're the best tweezers on the market, hands down. Now, not this actual pair, but just a pair of Tweezerman tweezers. But the beauty of these is that you can send them off to be sharpened or you used to be able to, and they'll send them back to you. So you get so much out of your initial investment. Now don't come at me if they stop that program. I haven't had to use it because one pair lasts for so long. These get the finest little hairs. And we also have the winner for the best scrunchie with the slip small slip silk scrunchies. That's really hard to say. So I have shown in previous videos, other brands that look like this that stretch out over time and they'll be hanging down to here while these maintain their shape. I know there are questions as to why would you spend this much on scrunchies, but if you have dry, brittle, maturing hair, if your hair is prone to breakage, this is the type of scrunchie that you want to get, the type of ponytail holder, hair tie, whatever we want to call it. These actually stay in your hair well while not causing damage. And they also mark my hair less than other hair ties. I have hair that will show indentations when I pull it back for the shortest amount of time. And these don't do that in the same way that other hair ties do. Plus they hold their shape. There's a reason why I keep buying the brand name. 
The climate I live in, New Orleans, is insanely humid year-round. It's, it's on another level. You can't even imagine it until you live here or until you visit. And my hair is not naturally straight or smooth, no matter if I wear it curly or straight. So when I share products that work for me, whether they're tools or products, they really work for me. There are a few brands that I re-mention over and over here because I've had such great success with them. GHD is one. So the winner of the best flat iron for wet hair styling is the GHD Duet Style. I have shared this several times on my channel. I think it's fantastic. What I love is that it's designed to keep your hair smooth and frizz free even in humidity and I find it does that. It's also supposed to minimize damage. I find it does that too. I love that it has these smoothing plates that stay cool when you use it to dry your hair but once you're finished drying you can convert it into a straightener. You can go into the that straightening mode and heat up the plates and it just it really works for me I've shared this several times in other videos so I don't want to get too into the weeds but I was happy to see that it was a winner and I know tools and things are going to vary based on your hair type keep in mind I have fine hair but a lot of it and this is just a tool that really really works for me is there a category they don't have? I feel like they have everything at this point. The winner for best razor is the Billy razor, which is the razor that's been living in my shower since I discovered it years ago. I mean, obviously with different blades. And actually now that I think about it, we moved and I replaced the entire thing when we moved. I got a new one. They carry them at Target now, I think. I went through a phase where I was trying all of these aesthetic razors. I tried the Flamingo and I didn't like it at all. And Billy won out. So I've been using it ever since. It gives me a nice, smooth shave, no razor burn, and it hangs neatly on my shower wall with this little gummy stuff and it stays. It has never fallen down ever. The winner for the best chemical and physical body scrub is Necessaire, the body exfoliator. I love the majority of Necessaire's products. They work really, really well and help you treat your body skin as good as you do your face. And one of the things I love about their products is that they come in completely fragrance-free versions, or you can get these essential oil blends. This comes in, I think, eucalyptus and sandalwood, and it's this very earthy scent, very spa-like. This has bamboo charcoal and glycolic and salicylic acid and it's meant to be used weekly to remove dead skin cells and just help renew your body skin's appearance. And it also helps your skin soak in moisture after better than it would had you not exfoliated. It's a really nice gentle product that works well if you have sensitive skin too. Sally Hansen Insta Dry is the winner for best quick dry polish. I can't even tell you how many shades of this I have. I was going to bring them all up here and then I thought, no, it doesn't matter what shade you get. This is a great product to have on hand if you're someone like me who is not currently getting your nails professionally done, but maybe you have something you need to have your nails look really nice for quickly and you don't have time to do a base coat and a top coat or to let your nails dry for a long period of time. You really just want to slap the polish on, have it dry quickly and go. This is what you need. It works really, really well. It's great for those times when you're in a pinch and you want your nails to look nice or you want to change your polish up and give it a different look, whatever it may be. It gives you nice color and it dries really, really fast. Now it's not going to be the longest lasting polish, but you know, you'll get a few days of it before you'll need to do something extra to it. It's a staple for me. It's, it's basically a necessity. So those were the 25 Allure Best of Beauty winners that stood out to me the most out of all of the winners. What are your thoughts on this year's winners list? I'd love to hear your comments down below. And if you wanna see some of my best and worst finds over the last month, be sure to check this video out. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.